Thank you, uh, everyone who's joined us this evening. This is a presentation put on by the Vermont Institute of Community and International Involvement, which is dedicated to bringing you controversial subjects in hopes that we can encourage all of us to think critically about what's happening in our world. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the elections that have occurred in France recently, the election that was between President Emmanuel Macron of France and Marine Le Pen, the leader of the National Front, although does that name change now from National Front to something else, I think? Rassemblement National. Yeah, Rassemblement National. Rassemblement National. Um, national gathering, in a way, right? Coming together. Yeah, coming together. Uh, with us tonight are two French speakers from the other part of the French world. Jacob Bolger is a, uh, the executive director of the Association of Advocates Living in Vermont. He is a man that was born and brought up in French West Africa, one of the old, I don't know what to call them, I guess, colonies of France. Uh, he watches French politics carefully, and he has a lot to say about the current election. He was brought up uh, in Burkina Faso, and he is now with us in Vermont. The other man is Eric Aniero, another French speaker from French West Africa. His country is the Ivory Coast. Both then have a lot of interest in French politics because they were part of the French empire, whether they wanted to be or not, for <laughs> decades. And so this election has a lot of bearing on Africa. And so we're gonna talk about both what happened in France and also what happened, how that was viewed in other parts of the French world. I might also say that because of these two gentlemen and people like them, I'm seeing in, uh, and, men, and women like that also, I'm seeing in Burlington, Vermont and in our whole area, a resurgence of the French language. Remember that this was a part, Burlington and Quebec, part of New France for many years prior to the formation of the United States. And French was probably the first language here. And that is happening again because we've had the uh, privilege of having so many new Americans come back to this area and they are also French speakers. Okay, so I'm going to uh, ask some of the, two of these gentlemen about what their views were then of the French election. And I hope that we can have time at the end for questions. So I'll first turn to Jacob, the gentleman from Burkina Faso, because I think that he has uh, the view, perhaps he can tell us a little bit of why he thinks that Emmanuel Macron won this very controversial election. So, Jacob, why? Thank you so much, uh, Sandy, and uh, thank you to you all for being here today with us. I think uh, we are going through a lot of turmoil, and uh, we and the world in general need a steady leadership. A leader that can reunite or gather everyone and reconfort the rest of the world. Over the past years, we've seen how we went from south to, I would say, to the opposite side with what's happened to the US and in the US with the previous administration, just focusing on bigotry, not trying to reunite the world. And also that has served as a lesson to other so-called dictators who were trying to learn from the same uh, tactics to also launch their political views. And that has created a lot of turmoil and a lot of bigotry throughout the world where few people are using their own interests to put people against each other. And uh, with what's happened since February in Ukraine, I think uh, the, French and the, the French election also was going to serve as a step forward to dividing further this world. That's why I think uh, it's really important that the French people have chosen a proven leadership that can work to rebuild not only a unity in France, but also work on looking at larger coalition throughout the world so we can come to a stable place where we can look at the development opportunities throughout the world and help those who are the most in need. Okay, so then I might turn to uh, you, Jacob, and then also to Eric, but there was a real threat from Marine Le Pen, the uh, leader of the Rassemblement uh, Nacional, Nacional. Um, and why did she do so well then? I think uh, Marine Le Pen did so well because 
she embodied the fear of the larger community. We don't see in each other peers that can support each other. We see in the other person, someone who is coming to take from us. And that's what Marine Le Pen was able to raise, bringing up the voice of those who were left out of, uh, from uh, everything that is happening since uh, the beginning and since the middle of the last century, where many factory jobs were shifted overseas. Those who were trying to make ends meet are not able to support and sustain their families and their lives anymore. So they think left out. So what is there now is seeing in the other person, mainly foreigner, seeing those person, those people, uh, a way of taking from them. And that's what Marine Le Pen was able to bring to the table. And anyone who felt left out, anyone who is afraid of uh, this uh, globalization was tempted to vote for Le Pen, which I think is not a way of doing politics. Politics is working to bring everyone together, build coalition that can help the nation thrive, not raising fears that can put people against each other. Okay, well, thank you. Okay, Eric, so... What is your view? Okay, I'll ask you the same question. Um, Macron seems to have symbolized, would you agree, kind of the status quo and the order that is established in France, right? But, but what about, well, go ahead. That no, I it. think like, you know, we're seeing it through the prism of uh, the uh, mainstream, like also, uh, you know, the liberal world that is today is dominating the rest of the world. And by what, what does that mean, the liberal world? I mean, is like capitalism, capitalism world? world, like, you know, those who are against, those, those who take the jobs from France to China, those who want to wage war everywhere on the planet just to feed the military complexes money, those who are still keeping people in Africa and around the world under neo-colonialism. Which is what? What's neo-colonialism? I mean, if you look at like the 15 or 14 countries that are linked to France through, you know, uh, these ridiculous, you know, uh, 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 currency, which is the Francais FA, a currency that is controlled, and then I weigh my words by the, uh, the French government and you know the Bank of France. If you see all these, you know, for example, Niger, which is the main supplier of uh, uranium to France and to a lot of countries in the world, and then Niger doesn't even have electricity, basic needs for the whole world. Uh, Macron also represent that world through which, I mean, who, which uses the monetary fund, the IMF, the World Bank to oppress people around the world. But also Macron represents what France was against this time. And that brought you know, like many French people that usually not don't vote for uh, Marine Le Pen to vote for her. It wasn't only about, you know, uh, I agree that, you know, the ideas, some of the ideas of the National Front in uh, France and all these resurgencies, I mean, of uh, nationalism around Europe, it's, it's like some, in Hungary, of, for instance, yeah, right? some of the ideas are frightening. Of course, we only see uh, the idea of not welcoming the immigrants. This is a scarecrow that, you know, usually, the mainstream media will use to disqualify, you know, what these people are saying. Okay, so let me stop. So Marine Le Pen is seen as anti-immigrant. Is that, she's, is that yeah, she's seen right? as anti-immigrant. She's seen as anti, you know, uh, because uh, Ma uh, Macron and, uh, you know, uh, a lot of liberals in France are in favor of the European Union, the big ensembles their participation to NATO and all, all this. But Marine Le Pen and a lot of nationalists across uh, you know, the globe that are you know, just 
you know, uh, spurring like here and there, are against these big ensembles, this globalization that has brought, according to them, more trouble than benefit. Of course, the first years of globalization, like in the US, allowed us to have, uh, I don't know, uh, some computers for half of the price that you would have paid if they were manufactured in your country. But at which extent? I mean, at which cost? Jobs. And Macron is ultra liberal. In France, people are very much, you know, jealous of the, you know, retirement system and the social system. Macron wants to have them work three more years. Macron is definitely, and the election showed it, he was elected just because people who didn't want Marine Le Pen to be there. To me, it's the downfall of democracy because democracy is about you bring your ideas and then I, you defend your ideas. If I like them, I vote for you. But all the people that wanted to vote for Ma Ma Marine Le Pen were, were, uh, were called you know, uh, sub people, people that don't have enough brain, you know, usually that, you know, uh, left-wing morale of, you know, we are, we work, we work more than you guys because you want to be a little country when we want the world to be united. It's the process of globalization that happened in France. Marine Le Pen made a surge, which is like, uh, ten, uh, five years ago, she was almost like 10 million or 15 million votes behind uh, Emmanuel uh, uh, Macron. This year, she's only 5 million votes away from it. She won by 48%. No, no, was that No, 40, 42%, 40, right, right. 40, around 41 yeah, point right. million, which is more than what she did last time. But bottom line is at least close to half of the country didn't vote for Macron. And then even more because only one third, around one third of the French went to vote. And then among these people, only 58% of the country voted for Macron. It means that Macron was only voted by a quarter of France. Mm -hmm. okay, so you... lessons have to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, drawn from, from that. Okay, well, what are you thinking? Is that correct that people just chose Macron because they feared her? I would say that's part of the problem. The reality is that we are going through a lot of turmoil. Over the past two or three years, we've gone through all the hardship of COVID. Not many people were able to make it. And with the progress of uh, health and science, we are living longer. Not many people are thinking long-term. All the safety net most of the, the developed countries had today is going to go away in a few years because people are living longer. Retirement plans need to be reformed. Our plans today would not be able to sustain the lives of those who are living long. Maybe my parents are living up to 80 today. In a few years, I might go beyond 80 years if there is no cataclysm. And these are things that the public should understand. When you are making policies, you are not making them for tomorrow. You are making them for the long term so it can sustain what we have today. And if people are thinking that those changes are affecting their ways of life and people are not willing to accommodate or to make some adjustment to those changes, we are going to be doomed down the road. We are going to use small shots. We are going to use small words and also bigotry to divide each other, not working on the long run to solve issues that would affect our community. And that's also what is affecting the rest of the developed world. Because Macron had to face a lot of uh, movement in France with uh, all uh, the folks who were on the street before COVID. And that's also affected the way people saw Macron as someone who is an elite coming to tell them what to do. But mm -hmm. Macron should rethink that. We have real need. The country has real need, not only France, but even other developed countries. They have real need. But how can we make sure that what we are sharing with our communities, with our countries, can 
he perceived as a way of helping everyone have a better life down the road. We are not, as a politician, we should not make it think that, see that uh, we are taking away from you. We should make sure that you are part of the solution. You are part of the problem we are try trying to solve today. And that's also one of the things Macron and other politicians should keep in mind when they are working towards the long term. Rethinking and looking at what happened today, those who didn't come to vote, those who voted against him, and putting clear policies on the table that are meant for a long term change. Okay, well, I think, Robin, do you have a question, Jim? I can't, we, you're muted, Robin. We can hear you. What, what, what are you saying? I, I have no question as of this moment. Maybe okay. later. All right. So what then I'm going to ask a question. Is there another question? Yeah. Yeah. Kurt, yeah. Kurt. In, in general, if any of the three of you can uh, shed some light onto what percentage of the French public has voted in the last few elections prior to this. I'm not. A, I'm not asking you for an exact percentage, but uh, you know, is it was it similar to no. this time around, or is it significantly more? It's, it's significantly less. There's a. I mean, this time, you know, I know that in the in, in some elections prior to that, there were less. You know, there could have been less, but you know. Uh, since Pompidou, and, and that's even what the historians are saying, Macron has been the, uh, the, the worst elected president since Pompidou, meaning that the abstention was high. The, and then not only the abstention, but those who went and cast a, cast a, a, a blank ballot. Can you do that in France? Yeah. You can do that in France. So when all this together will do give you an idea. So meaning that if you do the, the, the math, Macron has been elected only by a quarter of the population, which is his base. So what is but, that base, do you know? It's like, uh, I mean, Macron, Macron is, has come with a, a, a heavy load of, you know, uh, like it's it's a superstar. It's a media product. It's like mostly you know, and of course he represent that idea. I told you before we begin that France is still a monarchy somehow. You know, whereby even if it's a republic, the president has all the power. He can wage war. He can do whatever he wants. With few counter, I mean, uh, you know, uh, I mean, you can with few balance of power. To be honest, so that's maybe why when Marine Le Pen is so close to, to the presidency, they they're scared because then she will have to use the same power as Macron used to do what she wants. But I wouldn't be I wouldn't be so scared of someone who represents like the ideas of a, a, a great part of France to be there if I had count. I mean I have ways in my democracy to balance the power of that president. You it's know what I mean? the separation of powers. Yeah, it's yeah. like hardly the case in France. You know, they have a, a, I mean, a national assembly and things, but you know, the president, even Macron is called Jupiter. You know, Jupiter is like, he decides everything, the timing, you know, the substance of any discussion. So, that's why maybe they're scared about Marine Le Pen coming to use that same power, maybe to go by you know uh, uh, you know decisions that will not will be uh, detrimental to the new world order. But you know a lot of French people also voted for her because the media from the beginning have portrayed Marine Le Pen as as like it was she was a scarecrow. So people, and especially the older people, voted for Macron. The youth did. Who did they vote for? They abstained on that. Yeah, they abstained, yeah. and then they vote also for uh, Mélenchon, which who is like the new left wing, the ultra left. You know, uh, I mean, so uh, uh, people voted for Macron. Those who like that status quo of Stop. that Republic of France, with all the, you know. You know, you know how it is with Jupiter, with you know 
the solanity. And in fact, Macron is always seen as the winner in debate because over there, uh, and then the one who comes with like the best phrases, with a lot of ridicule, with a lot of esprit and spirit in a discussion over what is the real issue. So Macron knows how to, you know, so they see him as a very, it's like uh, if they were seeing Louis XVI or Louis XIV or right. something like that. Right. So, uh, but the real thing is why so many people, even in the French Andes, where you have a majority of black people voted for Marine Le Pen. Did you know, but Eric just told me that. Um, and I think I would like to ask more about that. Why in the French departments, right? Yeah. Like Martinique is a French state. Yeah, Martinique, right? Guadeloupe, yeah. Guadeloupe is also part of France, but it, being in the Caribbean is hugly black people. Yeah, they're black and people, you're telling me that they voted for Marine Le Pen. Okay. Mar yeah. And doesn't that contradict the popular idea of Marine Le Pen of being racist and a bigot and anti immigrant and so forth? No, she could be, okay? But it means that the real questions of these elections were beyond merely depicting a whole, whole block of French as non, I mean, non favorable for you know immigration wow. right. because it's a very very uh, I mean uh, it's a shortcut. The real issues were that uh, 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 the democracy is 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 like dying that you know, uh, people are fed up with like jobs going around, globalization has failed to me. Mm -hmm. And that maybe it's a signal to the leaders to start with thinking globalization and then to bring the debate to local issues rather than taking all the money. I wish this money that is being taken to Ukraine because France, right after uh, uh, Macron, uh, you know, uh, 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 one France has adopted, I mean, uh, like increased its military, you know, uh, uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, aid to Ukraine with now uh, weapons that are bigger and more lethal. It means that it's money that is being taken to Ukraine. That money, I wish, could be taken to those who don't have, uh, you know, food at home, then they won't have, you know, any reason to go vote for Marine Le Pen or someone who's seen as, you know, but I don't want to. To, uh, take the, 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 uh, be the only one. Okay, <laughs> Kurt, did you have something else? Yes? No, no I did not. No, no, he, uh, Eric answered my question. Okay, what, what, what concerned me is the numbers of people who abstain in this election. I wonder if you both could comment on that. I think uh, over the past, the last three elections, we've seen a decline in the number of people who going to vote, not abstaining only, but even uh, casting blank ballots. Which you can't do in this country. Yes, in the US you can't. Right. But it's a form of uh, discontent. People are not happy with their leaders. But the sad part also about France is the fact that many candidates can run during the first round. And if you look at any other party beside uh, uh, Macron's party and Le Pen's party, we have a lot of fragmented parties mm -hmm. yeah. that are left-leaning, for example, that could have come second if they had one candidate. But they didn't. They didn't, because they had more than, I think, four or five candidates that were left-leaning that run against these two major candidates. That's fragmented their vote. So maybe, Things could change a few weeks from now when we see the when parliament. we go to the parliamentary yeah. election. Because yeah. these left-leaning parties could coalesce to run against at least the two major candidates that came uh, up front. Okay, but still, in all, the question of abstentions concern me because I think that's the same in this country, right? Yeah. I mean, okay, so you have a small number of people going to the polls and it's a way of saying a plague on both your houses because they don't vote, period. They don't make that choice either in this country and they apparently didn't in France as well. So they're, they're in a way, they're, they're, Macron did not win by that much, 
right? Yeah, he didn't win by that much. And then also he was saved just because people voted, I mean, uh, they call it le vote utile, meaning like uh, you have uh, like this pragmatic vote. We don't want Marine Le Pen, but this is what the media and the, those who in, to me, that campaign against Marine Le Pen, I'm not saying that I'm pro Le Pen, mm -hmm. but I'm pro the expression, the free expression of the people. Even if they lean towards the ultra right, it's because the people of the, the left didn't do the job, the, the job, or there's no way to, to, you know, there is a reason for that. Because it's all too easy to fail to, uh, to, to bring, I mean, to give, you know, what the people need, and then to put it on the Putin war, mm. or to put that on, Marine Le Pen, you know, it's like here, I mean, uh, inflation started right before, way before the war, so everything cannot be blamed for, I mean, to, you know, upon, I mean, uh, 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 Putin. So in France, it's Marine Le Pen is doing so well because she's carrying, you know, the, you know, the thoughts of a majority of friends. Why they don't- Majority? I mean, a long, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, you know, if if I wish, you know, everybody went to vote, we would have known if, if eventually what she were. But in any case, she is the leader of a certain part of France that cannot be treated as people don't who are not. Okay, can I ask you a question? So that's pretty much what has been said about President, former President Trump, mm -hmm. right? that he also is expressing, or he is the voice mm -hmm. of the really discontented, right? Okay, so um, is that what is being, what you're saying is, is that true about Le Pen, Marine Le Pen? Is she the voice of the discontented? No, I'm not, not maybe. Uh, not, 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 I'm not saying the majority. Yeah, but. no, but some of them. Yeah. Because the people that are even from the far, I mean, far left voted, some of them voted for her. But Marine Le Pen maybe doesn't weigh that much. Maybe. But, you know, uh, the fact that she's doing so well is means that uh, you know, her base now is reaching to across France. And then, you know, like people that are not necessarily against immigration or, you know, you know, like Marine Le Pen, you know, are behind her because she's talking about issues that are their issues every day. She's talking about how you go to the hospital, how you're going to, you know, uh, your 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 pension and things like that. When Macron only talks about going to war to, with Ukraine, be, being like the, the, like macroeconomy, mm -hmm. you know, there's a there's a there's there's the Ma Macron is more into macroeconomy, and then the other candidate try to bring him into microeconomy. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, that's to me the big difference. Mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, we miss something in uh, during this debate. I wish uh, those who are asking the question had asked the candidates to lay out their plans for the future, not talking about the issue of the moment. We all know those problems, but what are we doing to solve those issues down the road? And this is what is lacking. Maybe the, the upcoming election will make a difference yeah. in helping people understand that they should all the leaders to the fire. So they can give them answers to their problem, but not promising them things that are not relevant to their lives. Did others, any other questions? Robin's got a question, yeah. yes. But you're muted, Robin. You're muted, Robin. Yeah, so, um, yeah. so I'm wondering, uh, Le Pen is, said to be anti-immigrant, but as I understand it, uh, Macron is actually, his immigration policy isn't that progressive. But what I'm wondering about is 
not the immigrants, but the 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 difference in their policy towards their their empire in Africa. Mm -hmm. In other words, do, does Le Pen have or Macron have a different uh, attitude towards the uh, the Russian military being in Niger or Mali or wherever it was, and the recent coups that have. Uh, uh, toppled uh, presidents in a number of Francophile uh, countries. Do they have a different uh, outlook on that or more or less the same? That's a great question. Yeah. That's a really great question, I think. And Jacob, you said when? Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, there is a difference because when you have a wrong perception of history, you will create more wars. And that's what Putin did. Imagine today, most of our African country decide that this part country was part of my country. I need to start a war to take that part back. Where would we be? And that's the wrong understanding of history that Putin had. I do not support French colonialism in Africa, but I do also blame African leaders for letting that perpetuate, not for letting that continue. Because we, after so many years of independence since uh, 1960, we should have come with policies that could empower our population. We could work on strategies, not on ideologies. And that's also what is lacking in most of our countries. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but yeah. on that, you know, it's yeah. very important. You know, these two ideas, even if you go to Africa today, among the Francophone people, at least those who want to get rid of French neo-colonialism will tell you that they were in favor of uh, Marine Le Pen. Marine Le Pen is promoting ideas that maybe are flattering these people, of course, because she's saying that she wants to change the dynamic of you know, France and, and, and the, in the relationship between France and former colonies. I don't know if it's just uh, uh, you know uh, wishful think, think wishful thinking because you know all the French they're all together for the interest of France, which is France is a superpower because it exploits fifteen countries or more in Africa. Uh, France also has always been impeding the aspiration for, for freedom in these countries in Africa. It's, the leadership is bad, but that leadership is composed of puppets under the strings of France. And the US. Those who have tried to escape their control were brutally murdered, like Thomas Sankara in Burkina Faso. Yes. So it's not that there's no, there's no uh, I mean, uh, uh, tentative, I mean, attempt to get rid of French colon neo-colonialism, but they come with brutal you know, uh, repercussions. So uh, people, uh, people wanted a new way of seeing Africa and Macron is in the continuum of the uh, neo-colonialism. He comes even in, in Africa, ask the president of the country where Jacob is from to go take care of uh, the air conditioning machine. He comes and can reunite like leaders that are almost his fathers. Of course, they his fathers because they don't want to leave their power. But if you go from like a guy from like Watara in Ivory Coast, he's been, Macron has accepted that Watara get a third illegal mandate. Macron is part of what we call France-Afrique, which is a foggy, you know, a, a, a foggy and very much, you know, a, 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 a James Bonding, you know, way of, you know, seeing the relationship between Africa and, 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 and France. They decide who's your president. They decide, for example, like in the case of Mali, to do whatever they want. They decide in Senegal what to build, I mean, to, to have like a train system that is 10 times the, the real price of the train system. 
They decided in Ivory Coast to build another train system, which is almost 2 billion, 2 billion euros when uh, Al, I mean, another uh, Chinese company, while even another European company or Turkish company would have done that for half a billion. So Macron represented during this election that old France that doesn't want to change their relationship with Africa. Okay, so what was the difference though? Was there a difference, as Robin was asking, between how French Africa viewed those two candidates? What was the was there a difference between Marine Le Pen and uh, Macron? Anyway, uh, you? Yeah. I think the difference between the two, based on what I've seen with uh, electors, is choosing the devil they don't know versus the devil they know. And I would say this, French is a nation of immigrants. And many immigrants felt that what was being said by Marine Le Pen represented danger for them. Because we've seen that throughout the world. We've seen that here in the US. We've started that immigrants is your problem. You need to get rid of them or your neighbor is taking away from you. If the same concept is starting also in France, many, I would say, close to half of the country will be divided. It's pinning one half of the country against the other half. Yeah, but and it, yeah. people wanted that stability, making sure that they can still continue to work on solving their differences than pin fighting each other. Okay, but I ask, okay, I wanted your comments later, but I really want to know in Africa itself, what, or rather I would like to know, does Marine Le Pen differ from Macron on the attitudes toward oh, the old French empire? Very much so, because I mean, I'm, I'm not in the big, I mean, uh, I mean the deep, deep down it's the French interest, right? But you know, the left, right, uh, and left, I mean, uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, the ultra right and ultra left are saying that it's about time. Mélenchon said it. Mac, uh, Mélenchon, Mélenchon, you Mélenchon, say who that is. Mélenchon yes. is like the leader of la, the, the La France Insoumise. Those who were out there with the uh, white vest, I mean, yellow vest, and he's, ah. he's like he's like the new leader of the left. Socialism. Yeah, he's uh, some kind of Bernie Sanders, but you know. Then he's like, you know, considered like over there, it would be a, a, a liberal in France rather than <laughs> a, a, a socialist. But, you know, they want a new relationship with, uh, with Africa. Marine Le Pen said, and I'm not sure if it's right. I mean, she's, she's truly thinking about it. But she said, if France change, changes the way they, they, they crippling the countries in Africa, we won't have that many immigrants. You know, the immigration even is, is more, the, you know, makes more sense. It's even better for the people like Macron because then they can have cheap labor. Mm -hmm. So, I mean. So Marine Le Pen says, or does she not, that the people should be stay at home. Stay at home. Right. We have a, to have a new, another relationship with these countries, not impoverish them so that all the people are living. When they say that a country like France is a country of immigrants, I agree. But why are people willing to die in the Mediterranean Sea to just go to France and have shitty jobs? So excuse my French, but you know, <laughs> shitty jobs in, in, in France. It's just because their countries are not good countries, even though Africa has all of the resources of the world, but their countries are still countries where they cannot have a good living. They're leaving these countries to, uh, to go to, to Europe. To me, it should be even a moral you know, uh, duty to stop that immigration, not wow. just to open their arms to people that are almost dead when they come by the sea, but to make sure that these people are not leaving the country. For that to happen, uh, you know, the former colonial powers have to stop, you know, crippling these countries with debt, with, you know, with, with, you know, you know, exploiting their resources, 
choosing who is to be the president over there and let the Africans like Thomas Sankara show to the world that an African country that is made of proud people that you know, know that you, know, you, you don't have to eat a baguette or two baguettes of France, uh, a French baguette per day, but you can eat your own cassava, transform into something that is good. You can make a living and be a proud man. Under Thomas Sankara, I'm pretty sure there were less Burkina Bay people Who's living. Proud? Thomas Sankara was, uh, uh, you know, the president of uh, Burkina Faso, a Fidel Castro of Burkina Faso, so to speak. But he was killed by his number two under the influence of France and Ivory Coast president because you know, he was against the interests of the West. So I think that uh, 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 immigration, of course, you know, when an immigrant comes to your country, you have to, you have to help him. But you shouldn't, you shouldn't foster more immigration by crippling so, down this country down there. That's, that's the difference between the two. But the, did she say that? She said that. And is that but, but I don't think she laid out clear policies that would make a difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, maybe. But wait a minute, can I ask you then, Jacob, a question? Do you think that that theory of immigration has any um, holding? I mean, if, I mean, if she's saying that Africa should be built up and so that people could stay in Africa rather than coming to France, do you think that that's a wrong policy? It is not a wrong policy, but you need to lay that out when you are campaigning but mm -hmm. not be vague on what you will do and using bigotry to put pe or pin people against each other. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but Macron also used bigotry and then the, you know, the mainstream media is also, as soon as uh, Marine Le Pen appears on TV, oh, she's like the devil, she's this. Of course, you know, she could be, even France. In France, at school, you don't have the right to have a veil. Yeah. Not in at school, but you can. I mean, you can do. I mean, Macron is for the veil outside the school, but not in the school. What is the difference? Well, there is a difference in terms of the law. There is. I mean, the right. law from yeah, France, right. Right. but you know, a, a girl from you know here in the U.S., a Muslim girl can keep her hijab yeah. at school if that's what she wants. So, but you know, so Macron is not that. And then uh, Robin said that his immigration policies are not that different from, you know, at least Marine Le Pen used it as maybe a, a, a campaign rhetoric because she knows that she can, she can get people around that idea. But Macron, when, you know, uh, when the election looms, the people like Macron start to, you know, crack down on immigration mm -hmm. just because they know that a lot of French people want immigration to be dealt with. But as soon as the election comes, then Marine Le Pen is there. She is the only one that is against the, you know, the immigrants. It's all France. I mean, the debate over immigration is an important debate. It's frightening. It's just because people are afraid because their jobs is, are taken away to China. They don't know what to do. I mean, so they will, they will find any reason. Except that nobody voted. I, I think Kurt. Yeah, Kurt, Kurt. So, I mean, um, it's partly a question, um, partly a comment. Uh, isn't it kind of naive thinking that Le Pen is going to really do anything for the people of Africa? Because at the end of the day, it's French corporations that are running the show in so many countries of French Africa. And whether it's Macron or it's uh, Le Pen, they're not going to sabotage their country's own corporations that are making money off the backs of, you know, hardworking and honest African pe people. They don't want to change this system. That, I agree. They, yeah, they, they're pro-Macron in general, aren't they? All, all the corporations are, yeah. are, are in favor of making money. Mm -hmm. And the way they make money is by you know taking advantage of people that are in these developing countries because they you know they they try to sell them with jobs and very basic resources so you know the the people in the countries also you know almost become addicted 
to thinking that these companies are the saviors and they're not the saviors. They're the ones who are holding the people in Africa down. Yeah, I agree but, with but, you. But that being said, so why would Macron or, or Le Pen change anything? Because that's what allows the country of France to have a high standard of living. That's a good question. But uh, at the same time, you know, uh, the relationship from France to Africa, I mean, between France and Africa is heavily, you know, uh, 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 affected by the politics. French politics can, you know, it's not like, even in the US, you know, why the US goes sometimes to do some regime change, if they were just relying on the, the big corporate, it wouldn't work because you have to subdue, you have to put the, the, the country on its knees politically and economically, and then, then come, so Macron is always preceding the businessmen. He goes to Africa, he twists arms, and the businessmen come by them, you know. So uh, I don't know if um, Marine Le Pen will change that because you're right, it means less money that comes to the country. But in contrary, Marine Le Pen is saying if we do more business here, if we in do France. in France, if we continue to do like, uh, if we have factories here, if we like, there will be less. I mean, we'll have more money within the country. Yeah. But I'm you. I agree with you that you know. And then I will Jacob that you know. We don't know if she's sincere or not. But what is perceived from the both sides is the same way. You know, people were seeing Donald Trump as a savior in Africa. I swear, absolutely, absolutely. Donald Trump in some countries they said we rather have like someone who. Who calls us, you know, shit whole countries and is sincere with what he really believes than the, the Democrats that come and put like fire across Africa. If you bring Susan Rice to Congo today, they will lapidate, they will, you know, lapidate her. If you bring Clinton and all other, you know, American politicians at that time to Congo and to Rwanda and all these people, people will just throw stone at them. I, I asked a fr friends like from Congo, oh, are you happy? The Democrats are here, it's oh, our nightmare is here. Because, you know, uh, uh, you know, they said, we rather have to deal with Donald Trump. We know, we know what he thinks. We know how he is. If, if he's here for business, so, so, so be. But we don't know people that will come with high moral, so to speak, standards, but are the ones who are even crippling these countries. You know, uh, 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 many of, I mean, it's, and it's, it's even Francois Mitterrand who signed, you know, the, you know, uh, the death of, you know, Thomas Sankara, somehow. Right. It's understood. Yeah. Uh, Francois Mitterrand, because Francois Mitterrand was so mad that Thomas Sankara, during a state dinner in Burkina Faso, told him to go back to France and leave the Africans alone. So I don't know if Marine Le Pen will be a change, but you know, Macron definitely. And then people told me in Africa, why don't we just try her to see at least yeah, what, yeah. What, what she got? Because these people who have been like, like so-called pro-immigrant in favor of helping Africa, always, you know, oh, Macron now, when he talks about Africa, it's like, oh, I'd have to save them. I have to do that, yeah. you know. People are fed up. Because in reality, Macron was there when Ouattara went for third mandate, illegal mandate. Macron is there when the, uh, the president of Togo is there at Vitam Eternam. So to them, Macron, is, and, then, and then plus Macron is pro big, big corporates. So, so uh, the choice, I mean, could be maybe in favor of uh, Marine Le Pen, uh, over there. And then if Marine Le Pen, I mean, chase all these guys away from France, maybe they will come back to their countries and start a revolution in their own countries because then, you know, uh, because like... They're, they're well, not wait, Jacob, you're from Burkina Faso. There's, everybody's talking about this guy Sankara, right? Yes. I, I, and also, I want to make an announcement. I think that we might have a, uh, the showing of a documentary about Sankara here, right, Robin? Yes. During Africa Day. During Africa Day, right. Okay. Anyway. Friday the 27th of May. Wow.
Excuse me? Friday the 27th of May. Friday the 27th. I think we have to announce that to Jacob. I haven't had a chance to talk to him about that. Anyway, why don't you tell us a little bit about No, I think uh, we, not only Sankara, but many leaders in the country, in uh, the African continent, had a strong vision of what the country or the continent should have looked like, relying on its own resources and investing for the children of their countries. But over time, this ideal has faded because outside powers have taken over and imposed their own vision of their own interests. And it's true that many international corporations are to blame for the demise of many African countries. But I think as natives of this country, we should also share part of that responsibility. No one, no one would come to save you if you don't want to try to save yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why I always think that even though the international corporation or other countries are pushing and destroying our countries, we should also, after so many years of uh, sufferance, after so many years of uh, pain and uh, uh, collapse or wars, we should also rethink on how we can rebuild our relationship with our neighbors first, but also looking at how we can invest and empower our countries so children from those countries don't have to risk their lives trying to get to safety and have a better life. Okay, so who else has a question? Oh, Kurt again. Grant, did you have a question too? No. Who else? Kurt again? Kurt? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, Jacob, I, you know, I think what you're saying you know, makes a lot of sense. Uh, the only issue is you know, you're talking about people having to make a sacrifice in many situations with not, in the short term, not being able to feed their kids, their husbands or wives, whoever, you know, not being able to have a place to go to work. And that is, I think, often, you know, the, the real difficulty when, you know, when you ask for a revolution against these multinational companies. And then at the same time, you know, there are quality leaders as there have been historically in Africa, but then, you know, like you'll have a Patrice Lumumba, you'll have people like that, but then they get knocked off by, uh, by Western, a phys literally knocked off by, right. you know, by Western interests and intelligence agencies that are working along with these big multinationals. So then you have a, a leadership deficit, which is very difficult to fill, you know, when they're literally killing some of these people. But what I think that is at issue is those leaders for, like Fidel Castro in Cuba for all of his faults was acting against, um, in his case, American capitalism. In the right, but I'm talking about like someone like right, the but they to, You're right. I mean, those people get knocked off and that's what these two men are saying. In Africa, it's quite a pattern. If yes. you have someone like Patrice Lumumba, as you're talking about, they get knocked off and assassinated by the, the old colonial powers. Good, but we need to understand that nothing will be done in Africa until that revolution that cut the throat of the king is done. It happened in the US. If the US didn't have their revolution, I'm pretty sure they would still be, you know, held captive by the army. If the Polish didn't have their revolution, they would have still been under, you know, if the French didn't have the revolution. So no country should be, I'm not saying that we should uh, go for blood and things, but it's, that's how the nations, you know, uh, uh, go by the history or the, the destiny to put down the feudal system and I can talk about that feudal system because I was part of it in, 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 in Ivory Coast. My grandfather was a very good friend of the French. In return, he used to have land that would live here all the way to St. Albans, just because he was a good friend of the French. I mean, <clears throat> that has, until the Africans find a way to do that revolution, mm -hmm. They won't, there will be nothing. If tomorrow all the leaders that are backed 
by uh, by the French or the colonial powers, uh, if they are you know taken down there the, by the people, France, I swear, France, the following day will come and say, let's renegotiate our thing. So you the think, problem, yeah, Eric, you, uh, Eric, yeah. you think they're going to say renegotiate? Or you think they're going to come with an army? They will come with the army first, but you know, and then I hope that our friends here that are so quick to go to war in Ukraine, even though they are, you know, you know, among the liberals, I mean, among the, you know, the, uh, the progressive, progressivists here, that are so quick to go, uh, you know, to war against Russia, will then cry, like, uh, you know, uh, because something like this is happening in Africa. They have already been sending their own, uh, their own armies many times. In Ivory Coast, I was a reporter for CNN. I saw with the, you know, some uh, uh, help from the CIA, the French went to beat a guy over there over a local election. So we've seen that many places. So how do we get, that's the difficulty, that's the drama of Africa. Last time, uh, the, uh, the editor of uh, uh, Towards Freedom asked me, what is the problem? What is the enemy of Africa? I said, the enemy of Africa is the African leadership first, but this African leadership has, you know, uh, the, I mean, is backed by the colonial power. So there's two enemies to fight. It's difficult. Even the US, the Americans had it easier than what the African has to do. The Americans at least had one enemy. It was, you know, England. England. But the Africans have not only to fight their own leaders, but they have to fight the French armies that are positioned in their country. It makes it very difficult. Yeah. I don't see anybody in the US from the liberals to say that. All they say, okay, so let's send some clothes, let's send some food to Africa, but none of them is working for these people to, 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 to do their revolution so that tomorrow their kids won't come here, die in the, the sea to come to America. Okay, but wait a minute. So he's saying some really heavy stuff here, Eric, about revolution. I doubt if Jacob would share that opinion. I don't know. What is your opinion? Does Africa, do African countries need a revolution? We do need a revolution. Oh, but wow. I think uh, to get to that point, we have to have also educated leaders mm -hmm. who can maintain mm -hmm. and sustain that revolution. And that's also what is lacking right now. Because most of our countries are not investing in what could empower the population. And that's the sad part. And I don't trust anyone to do that for us if we don't send for ourselves. The Chinese yeah. are coming for their own interests. Yeah. They will bring contracts that are cheap just to gain access to your country and to rip you off. And uh, the Russians also? The Russians uh, are doing yeah. the same thing. But Jacob. You know, Something happened. It, it might be the end of the session. Oh, good point. Um, no, sorry, folks. This is Jenna. I'm doing the tech, and the meeting is still running. It looks like just their computer is frozen. I'm gonna uh -huh. give. I'm gonna call on the phone and see if they realize. Yeah. <laughs> we can continue the discussion without them. <laughs> or evaluate what they've been saying. <laughs> Well, um, I was going to bring up a, a different example um, because of my relationship to Rwanda. And that had to do with um, Rwanda is not, quote, liked by the US because it doesn't abide by US um, rules. And this is since um, post the, the genocide. Um, so they've had in the global market had to befriend other places. And that leads to what um, J Jacob was just saying with the Chinese coming in and building roads or, or buildings or whatever. 
Um, and so making those relationships and, and, and Rwanda had done a really good job in the last 20 years of moving forward and moving forward independently and without a lot of strings attached from other countries. And yet it can't float. I mean, all of these impending looming fingers of corporations are huge as Kurt brought up. Um, you know, countries can't function independently anymore. So I'm not clear about this role of revolution because it's not independent of corporate manipulation. Yeah, it's, it's and the amount of money, and maybe Robin, you can speak to this, the amount of money that the military armature industrial complex is making in Ukraine right now is just astronomical. So, yeah. Um, I, I, I just, it's, it's not as simple as, as, um, what it was even as much as 20 years ago. But I mean, some of the metrics that I've read about, uh, Rwanda specifically is in terms of, you know, population, I mean, the participation of women in government and, uh, you know, other, other benchmarks are, are actually quite impressive in terms of them, you know, being able to pull that off on their own. And, uh, you know, given the, the post-genocide environment, uh, from everything I've read, I mean, they've done a relatively admirable job uh, without, without the assistance of, you know, many of the, uh, the former colonial powers that are often looked at as saviors. Right. But well, I guess what I'm saying is, is, those players uh, are, might not be the previous colonial powers, but the global network is out there trying to manipulate a small country because in fact, it's doing well. Yeah, I think it's impossible to escape that, yeah. whether or not there's an internal revolution or, or something that happens from, from abroad. Yeah, but, but the one reason why Rwanda is doing well is because, um, the minerals from the Congo are carried across the border and uh, and, and uh, are sold to the world as if they're Rwandans. In other words, the Rwandans get the money from the minerals from the Congo. That's what I've understood. One of the reasons why there's still uh, tension between those two countries. Diane, if I might ask you, what's your relationship with Rwanda? or? Um, yeah, so I'm an architect and I've done a lot of community planning. Um, I have friends that were at UVM that returned to Rwanda and in that process, I returned with them and helped do several projects there. Um, as returning, um, a returning family, they wanted to invest in the country and we sort of both taught how, how would a country that's only known for genocide, how would two people reinvest in their own country if they were going back? So that became um, a couple of projects. And then I got involved in one of the major national parks and doing a master plan. Um, so I've been there like maybe five times, but I haven't been there now in maybe six years. Yeah. So, um, you know, that was probably at the height of its it's sort of coming into itself mm -hmm. um and and at that point you could start to see the pressures of stuff and as robin's bringing up the pressure from the congo a lot of it is immigration and refugees mm -hmm. yeah. some of whom have been there for over 20 years within a particular context of, of encampment wow wow yeah i mean i know but, that they've done a lot with respect <laughs> to trying to attract uh tourists Yes. Uh, from abroad. And I don't know if that's considered amongst people in Rwanda a good thing. You know, people come there to do the uh, mountain gorilla hikes. You know, there's a, supposedly a great genocide museum in Kigali. Uh, and then there's some okay. other nice things to see. Yeah. All right. So, all of we'll that is true. And um, um, the, the, the push for making the tourism pay the proper dollar and not the cheap dollar. They've been right. really strong at keeping forward. Um, so I do think that they, they've, 
and the population is quite educated. Doesn't mean that everybody is, sure. but it's also an example of where there was a culture that cohabitated as a three part culture, almost four part culture before, before colonialism. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it historically had multiple ethnicities within the context of the kingdom. Wow. And it recognizes that. I, I see our hosts are back, um, <clears throat> uh, but I have to it, leave. I have something at seven to go. Can to. you? Can you? Can you? Can you hear us? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I think we probably have to close for the evening. I think it's a long debate about, especially for me. It's been very uh, consciousness raising to work with these with this group of Africans at the Association of Africans because you get a different view uh, about, I guess, imperialism in Africa, in Latin America, and in Asia, a totally different view of the world. For instance, I wanted to talk tonight too about how the rest of the world really sees the war in Ukraine. And if you think about it, what Erica said prior to this, is that because of the distrust of the old imperial powers, France, England, the United States, Belgium, because of that distrust, many of those countries in Africa, Asia, and Latin America really are not with the NATO powers at all and see instead um, more uh, maybe assistance and more uh, even friendship from the Russians and the Chinese. So, Seeing the West in a different way is very important, I think, for Americans and for everyone on, to recognize that there is a black and brown world who really doesn't think that the way that the Europeans or that the US and Canada think about things. Very important to, I think, for me personally, and I think for Americans in general, to realize that and try to cope with it, that we're really not as wonderful as we might have seen to us at one point. But anyway, I don't think that's... Yeah, me, I will close by saying that, you know, uh, in France, we will see a revolution. You know, we've seen the gilet jaune, yellow vest. the yellow vest for a while, but what is coming up is even worse than what, because nothing has been solved yet. It seems that the tensions have risen to a, a level so, so much so that even the left wing is voting for Marine Le Pen. So it's like what is coming up to Macron is very, very, and then it will be the same thing in many places around the West, right. where people are disillusioned right. by, you know, a democracy, a democracy that was supposed to be bringing, you know, a, a peace. People are disillusioned because you know uh, they you know life is not only about getting a t-shirt for nine cents at uh, in in the supermarkets here. Life is about seeing a father go to his job and bringing that uh, good. No more gold to back up like the the world economy. Just like papers that people are printing, like even worse than you know banana republics. So. If we don't pay attention, we're going to a big chaos, and it's a wake-up call for the Western powers. What, what about you, Jacob? Any last words? Uh, I hope uh, the upcoming legislative election in France would help uh, the country vote on policies, not on uh, ideology, because uh, that's what those who are in need would benefit more from. We should not vote for people because they represent a, a political party, but they, we should vote for them because they are bringing something on the table that can help us solve our problems and bring the community together. And this is uh, also uh, what I'm hoping for the next uh, election that are coming in a uh, few weeks. In June, uh, right? In June, yes. Yeah, those so, will be the parliamentary. Yeah. And I wish we can uh, see what uh, those parties are suggesting or are offering as policy before we head to, or the French people head to the polls. So at least we can have an informed decision or the French people can have an informed decision. Okay, well, thank you. Okay, thank you. And maybe, maybe
maybe the technology will be better next time and we might do an update for the parliament elections in France in June. Thank you all.